Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Arian. I am photo retoucher and you can learn, make and create together with me. So today I'm going to show you how you can edit a beauty portrait step by step using my actions. So without any further ado, let's get started. But first thing first, as you can see, this portrait needs to be clean. And for cleaning, I'm just gonna click here on the clean and click play. After I do that, as you can see, we have two different layers. One of them is clean and one of them is a black knight health layer, which helps us to see some details uh, in which in the color we can see. So for cleaning, I'm going to use three different tools. One of them is spot healing brush tool, a second is healing brush tool, and the third is patch tool. So for, the, for this moment, I'm gonna use spot healing brush. I will just zoom in here in the forehead and I will start cleaning. If you want to get this raw file, please check the link in the description of my Telegram channel. Uh, I post every raw file that I use for the video tutorials. So if you want to follow my step-by-step -step process for this process of retouching, uh, go get the raw file and check the link for the retouching actions. Recently, I've made a creator bundle pack so you can get it for 35% discount, something like that. And you can start following my step-by-step -step process as I said before. So as you can see, I'm just cleaning the face and I will speed up this process because it will take more time. Now that we're done with cleaning, it's time for dodge and burn. So I'm just gonna click on this black metal layer and I will delete because we don't need this anymore. And I will click here on dodge and burn, click play, and I have to click here on the dodge and burn check layer because we are going to work in the inverted way. So I will just open this group and I will click here on the levels. And I will make this a little bit black, darker, sorry. And this is the dodge and burn help check layer. Uh, this is the inverted uh, technique. So we have to use dodge in the brighter parts and we have to use burn in the darker parts. So we are going to dodge the brighter parts first with a white brush and 10% opacity and 100% flow. I'm just gonna start painting here where we have the brighter parts. So this is the dodge burn technique in the inverted way. Let's just check a bit and after what we've done so far. And as you can see, it has desaturated in this part, for example, here. And here, so you have to open this group and click on the desaturated layer and turn out this because uh, we want only to dodge. And here you can see a before and after. So turn on again the dodge and burn help check layer and click on the burn. Use again a white brush with 10% opacity and 100% flow and start painting on the darker parts. As I said before, this is the inverted technique and you should really try this because it helps you to dodge and burn in a better way with some better results. Now let's just check a before and after all the burn. And I think that is looking nice already. As you can see, we have just uh, put down the too much highlight, as you can see. Now open the group again, and this saturated layer uh, lowered the opacity by 25%. Now let's just check a before and after all this entire process. 
and I think that is looking good. Now click on the dodge only. And I think that I will lower this by 50%. Now check again before and after. And I think it's looking good. Check out the burn. And it's looking really nice. I'm just gonna lower this until 80%, 80 sorry. And I will merge these two layers. And I think that now is okay. So we should continue with the frequency separation. Click here on the FS plus and click play. For the right radius, you have to slide this into 0 0.1 and start sliding this into right uh, until uh, some details disappear. For example, eight, uh, I think eight is enough. So I'm just gonna click here on the group and as you can see we have two different layers one of them is low frequency and the other one is high frequency so the low frequency is for the color and high frequency is for the texture so we are going to work in both of them separately so let's just turn out the high frequency and use mixer brush mixer brush is here and for the settings of the mixer brush for web we are going by 10 percent low 25 mix 45 and flow 33 and start mixing the skin tones of the face let's just check how before and after and I think that it started looking good so keep working until that we are done in the low frequency I'm just gonna mix the skin color on the arms and in her left hand let's just check up before and after let's just zoom out And yeah, I think it's looking good, just that in this part it's totally destroyed. So I'm just gonna create a layer mask here. And with a black brush at 100% opacity, I'm just gonna paint it here. So this is the best way we clean a mistake that is made. Now let's just check up before and after again. And I think it's looking nice. So now that we are done, with the low frequency or the color, it's time for the high frequency or the texture. So for the texture, we are going to use clone stamp tool. And this is for cleaning. So for cleaning, we are going to use this way. We have to hold alt keyboard and click here for copy and brush where we want to clean. So this is the best way for cleaning in the high frequency or in the texture uh, be careful when you use clone stamp tool in this part uh, in the high frequency because you don't want to copy paste that texture for example here and paste it here because you will create something really bad so be careful when you do this because you have to copy paste the texture as near as possible when it's uh, when we are working on the face because you will create uh, some bad texture and nobody wants that now let's just check a before and after I just clean the neck and I think that it's starting to look good just that uh, for cleaning this part 
we are going to use a different frequency separation i'm just gonna merge this group into one let's just check a before and after zoom in a little and i think that is starting to look good i'm gonna merge these two into one click here on the actions and click play and this time for the radius i'm going by five percent the reason why i'm doing this is because we have to work in the low frequency more again with a mixer brush i will start just mixing the skin tones around this part now let's just check a before and after you have to zoom out every time you want to see some before and after and i think that is starting to look good now that we have something to work here in the high frequency again with the clone stamp tool you have to copy paste the texture as near as possible now let's just check a before and after and yeah i think it's looking really nice now that we are done with the face i think that the problem that we want to solve is here around the lips as you can see we have some kind of blue color something like that so i'm just gonna create a path around the lips so for doing this i'm going to use pen tool and i will make a shape around the lips and i think this one is looking good so i'm just gonna right click and make selection with a feather radius i'm going by 2.5 i guess something like that and i will create a new layer here and i will click ctrl and delete to make a selection and here you can see uh, the selection we have made uh, which is 2.5 of feather radius was too much so i'm just gonna go back and i will right click again so this time for the uh, feather radius i'm going by 1.6 something like that i will create an empty layer here and Control delete keyboard to make a selection and i think that this one is looking good now i will go again into the frequency separation group and i will turn off the high frequency and i will hold Control keyboard and click here on this selection of the lips and i have to invert this because it's only inside the lips so we are going to work outside so for inverting i have to hold uh, Control keyboard and shift and click i so this is the inverted way and again i will use mixer brush and i will clean the lips outside now let's just check before and after and yeah, I think it's looking good. So be careful in the smaller parts because uh, you have to use a smaller brush. Now let's just check out before and after all this process. And I think that is looking really nice. Now click again here in the low frequency and as I said before, hold control keyboard and click on the selection of the lips. Now we are going to work inside them. So I'm just gonna use mixer brush and I will add more color around the lips. This is the best way you can fix the lip color in and out. Now let's just check a before and after, zoom out and yeah I think it's looking really nice but as you can see we have some kind of shiny or white color and to get rid of that we have to go in the high frequency and click again on this selection and invert this and this time in the high frequency you have to use clone stamp tool. So you have to copy paste the texture around the lips 
because the problem is there. So be careful again this time because you don't want to uh, create some bad texture around, around the lips. So you have to copy paste as near as possible. Now let's just check a before and after. And I think that is looking really nice. So you have to clean this around the lips because we didn't earlier because we had the higher feather radius and the frequency separation. So this is the best way you have to clean the portrait. And I think that we are gonna remove this light under the nose. So this is the problem I guess in the low frequency and as you can see so you have to copy a color I guess a color that is here and use the brush and paint it here. And now that is not removing the problem is in the high frequency so we have to use the constant tool again on this part as you can see it's completely removed now check a before and after and I think that is looking really nice now as you can see we have some kind of harsh te texture in this portrait and to get rid of that you have to drag and drop this into the plus and go to edit fill and choose 50% gray and click ok the blending mode should be normal as it is now as you can see it's totally blurry so we don't wanna uh, see this because it's totally blurry and we have to create a black mask layer mask sorry you have to hold alt keyboard and click here on the layer mask and we have clean that so to wipe out the harsh texture or how should I say you have to use a white brush 100% opacity and start painting all that texture that we want to smooth out as you can see it's making totally blurry and this is a great technique to smooth out the harsh texture but not 100% because it's obviously too much so I'm just gonna paint around the face where we have the harsh texture and this is not properly as you can see but you have to lower this by 32 maybe 30 percent let's just check a before and after and yeah 32 is way too much so i'm just gonna go by 20 percent now let's just check a before and after all this entire process and as you can see we still have some harsh texture on this part so i'm just gonna create another copy of this and this one should be in the clipping mask because we don't want to let gray look so click here that we have made another copy and i will use mixer brush on this part and i want to mix the texture as you can see and this is not the best way to do this because it's looking really bad so i'm just gonna turn down the opacity by 35 and let's just check a before and after and yeah i think it's looking good and now that we are done with frequency separation i think that it's time for global dodge and burn so click on dodge and on the burn click play click here on the black and white tile player and i'm gonna start using the dodge and burn first dodge sorry with a white brush i will just paint it where we have some highlights something like that now let's just check up before and after and i think that is starting to look good so i'm just gonna use a higher opacity of brush and start painting where we have some highlights now let's just check up before and after and yeah i think it's looking really nice i'm just gonna put some dodge on the hair because the hair are looking really nice 
in this portrait. Now check the before and after every time you are using the dungeon bird because this is the best way you can see the results. You have to zoom in and zoom out. Now, if you want to enter the layer mask, you have to hold Alt keyboard and click here on the layer mask. And as you can see, this is what we've done in the layer mask of the dodge. And as you can see, we have to blur this part because it's too harsh. I'm just going to create a selection. And I will go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I think that 10 will be enough. So yes, 10 is OK. I will make a selection here and I will go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I will choose 20. I will select again, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I think that 10 would be enough for this. Yeah, 10 is enough. Now to go out of the selection, click Alt and hold it again and click here. So we just entered out and check a before and after. Now click on this group and click on the desaturated and turn off this. Check a before and after. And yeah, I think it's looking really nice. Now it's time for the burn. So again, for the burn, we have a white brush with 10% opacity. And I'm just gonna create some contours around this beautiful portrait. Now let's just check up before and after. And I think that it's starting to look really nice. So I'm gonna use a white brush again, but with an opacity of 40% because I don't wanna work too much on this part. Now let's just check up before and after. And I think it's looking really nice. Now enter again the layer mask, click on the filter, blur, Add some Gaussian blur. Let's just check a before and after. And I think it's looking good, but 100% uh, is way too much. I'm just going to lower it by 65. Check again. I think it's looking good. Now I'm going to use the burn in the hair too, because I want to make them really nice. Now let's just check a before and after. And yeah, I think it's looking really nice. Enter the group of the burn and click here on the uh, click here on the saturated layer and lower this by 35, something like that, because this one adds color to the burn. And I think that we are done with dodge and burn. Now click on the actions and I will click here on the makeup artist retouching actions. Click on the I plus all in, click play. And I will go to the Smoky Eyes Mascara. Now click here on the eyeshadows and click play. Now zoom in into the eyes. Open the group I plus all in. And this one says remove veins. So this one is for cleaning the white of the eyes. And as you can see, it's totally blurry. So I'm just going to reduce this by 35. Click here on the brightening. This one is for the white of the eyes. It put more light into the white of the eyes. Zoom out if you want to see a before and after. And as you can see, obviously, it's way too much. I'm just going to lower this by 35. Check again. And I think it's looking good. This one is for the eyeballs. I'm just going to use 100% white brush and paint it here. Do this on the same both of the eyes. Just check a before and after. And this one is looking good. Click on the iris contour and use again 100% brush. This one is for the contours. This one is my favorite. Now let's just check a before and after. Yeah, I think it's looking good. Now let's just zoom in here on the eyes. And I think that we need to reduce or remove the red color. So I'm just going to create a hue saturation. Click here on the reds and reduce the saturation to zero and I think that we still have some magenta click here on the magentas and 
as you can see it's totally out and as you can see we still have some blue color inside the eyes so click here again and click on the blues and reduce this make this layer mask black and use a white brush to paint it where we want to remove the color but we are we are not going to remove 100% because it will look fake and we don't want that I just check a before and after as you can see as obviously white out so I'm just gonna reduce this by 50% and I will create another first layer I will increase the lights and I will create a flipping mask and let's just check a before and after and I think that is looking good now close the I plus group and you can see before and after I think it's looking really nice now click here on the mascara and zoom in into the eyes 100% opacity I'm just gonna paint it here to make the eyelashes a little darker so let's just check a before and after and I think that they are looking good just reduce the opacity click on the smoky eyes again with a white brush and this time with 50 60 percent opacity i'm just gonna paint it here around the eyes now let's just check a before and after and i think that smoky eyes doesn't fit or suit for this kind of portraits i'm just gonna lower this by 15 percent let's just check a before and after all the entire process and i think it's looking really nice so I'm just gonna click here on the eyeshadows that says pick a color. This one is for the color of the shadows. Eyeshadow, sorry. So I'm just gonna pick, I think that some kind of uh, red or orange color, something like this. And this one is, I think it's okay. So I'm just gonna paint it around the eyes. And this one is for, for makeup artist and it's really nice because if you didn't put makeup around the eyes you can do with this layer as you can see a before and after you can even go with another one and you can choose for example the red color that is in the lips or in the head and you can just paint it here or you can use a 100% opacity and make this a little too much with the red and as you can see this one fits but you have to do it correctly so I'm just gonna delete it and I will keep this kind of color but 100% of this is way too much so I'm just gonna lower it to 20 and I think that 20 is enough now that we are done with the eyes I'm just gonna merge these all layers into one by drag and drop this and shift holding shift keyboard clicking here and i will make the group from these layers and rename retouch you have to drag and drop this and merge the group as you can see before and after you have to click control keyboard and click a for entire selection and control c click here on the file new and click create and paste it the picture here now you have to merge these two layers into one because uh, some actions for example the lips uh, actions doesn't work when you have too many layers in the port in the window so i'm just gonna click here first on the lips and cheeks and click play now i'm gonna paint it when it says rosy lips with 100 percent brush it will make uh, the lips with a rosy color you can check up before and after and click here on the rosy cheeks so i'm just gonna paint it when i think that 100 percent is way too much of the brush now let's just check up before and after and yeah this is way too much so i'm just gonna lower this by 15 percent 
check on the rosy lips and the rosy is too much i'm just gonna lower this by 20 percent and i will merge these layers into one again click here where it says lips dodge and burn this is db dodge and burn and zoom in as you can see it says pick a color and this one is called dodge so i'm just gonna pick the lip color where is the lighter lighter color and this one is for the dodge this works only for the lips now let's just check a before and after and yeah, i think it's looking good now reduce the opacity by 50 percent click here that says pick lips color burn you have to choose a darker color of the red and i think this is one okay and start painting when you want to create some shadows for the lips and i think that i want this one a little darker now zoom out and check a before and after and yeah this one is looking good but 100 percent is again way too much so lower this by 50 percent and merge these two layers again into one click here where it says uh, lips glow and click play use white brush with 100 percent opacity and you have to paint around the lips this one adds glow into the lips but this time in the red color i think that is not showing that much so let's just check a before and after as you can see and when we have 100 percent the results are uh, too much so let's just reduce this by 25 and merge into one click here it says soft lips and wait until it's done and use a white brush again just paint around the lips this one is to make the lips a little softer because sometimes we have high texture in the lips let's just check a before and after and they're looking really nice but 50 percent or 100 is way too much so i'm just gonna lower this by 20 and merge this two layers again now click here on the whitened teeth click play with a 100 percent brush i'm just gonna paint around the teeth and i will reduce the color inside them and i will make them brighter now let's just check up before and after and 100 percent is kind of too much and at i think is okay now merge these two layers now that we are done with the lips and the teeth it's time to add some sharpen and some contrast and some base contour to this portrait so i'm just gonna click play on the sharpen and be careful on this part because as i said before uh, some kind of actions on the makeup artist retouching actions work fine only when we have a single layer which is background so be careful doing that click here on the basic contrast turn off first and click here on the face contour click stop now as you can see you have add some sharpness into this portrait but it's not showing because we have a black mask so we have to invert the black mask into the white and check a before and after and 100% is kind of too much so I'm just gonna lower this by 32% check again and 32 is way too much again so I'm just gonna lower this by 20 and I think it's fine yeah 20 is okay now turn on the basic contrast as you can see it adds some more contrast to the portrait but 100% is not that we are looking for so I'm just gonna go by 30 and 30 is fine click here on the face contour this adds some contours to the portrait and as you can see we have too much highlight in this portrait so you have to just double click here this one is for the highlights this one is for mentons and this one is for the shadow so i'm just gonna slide this into the right now check a before and after zoom out and 100 percent is way too much for this one so i'm just gonna lower this by 30 percent and let's just check a before and after 
and yeah, I think it's looking good. Now merge these layers into one again and drag and drop this, use move tool and I'm just gonna put this into the original file. As you can see, let's just zoom in. Now check a before and after of this entire process. And now that we are done with retouching of the face and I think that I'm going to change the backdrop of this portrait. So to change the backdrop, we have to select the model first because we have to separate the model and the backdrop. So I'm just going to create the selection around the model. Now that I'm done with the creating selection, right click and make selection. And for the feather radius, I think that I will go by one. Now I have selected the model. I will hold control keyboard and J to create another copy of the selection and zoom in. As you can see, we have some feather radius. So we have to delete this part. So just make another selection. Now that I have created the selection with again with feather radius one pixel, I will just delete this part. And here is the model separated from the backdrop. And as you can see, we still have some color here. So to uh, clean that part, I'm just gonna turn on the background copy, hold Control keyboard, and click here on the selection click here and select and mask so this is how we select and mask and use the this tool to remove the hair because we need to clean the previous backdrop color if you want to make some changes and click here on the radius and slide this into the right and click on the smart radius click here on the add some contrast to this part because we want to separate it completely and click here on the shaft edge sorry shift edge and slide this into the left until we see some changes and i think that now is looking good now just click ok and control keyboard and j to make us up to make another layer now that we have created another layer, let's just put an empty layer and use a color. And I think that red is enough. Make this portrait, this backdrop, sorry, totally black. And as you can see, a before and after of what we've done already. But uh, in this backdrop or in the background, as you can see, the backdrop was uh, with texture. So I'm just going to click here from blending mode I will go to multiply or some others and I will see them which one uh, suits it better and soft light I think is looking good or overlay or maybe vivid light something like this and I think that I will stay with overlay but I will duplicate this and the blending mode from overlay I'm just going to normal because it was too dark so I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this or maybe put this down there and I just reduce the opacity of this one and this one too let's just check a before and after and I think that is looking really nice. So if you want to change some other color, you can just click here on the hue saturations and slide this until you have your own choice of the color. For example, this kind of green looks really nice. And you can just copy this color 
oops, sorry. And click here on the solid color and choose this green. Click OK. And you have to turn off this hue saturation adjustment. And as you can see, it's totally green. So if you want to make some, I think that lights or make it lighter or darker, something like that, you can just use curves or levels. It doesn't matter. If you want to put some other color, you can just click here and choose a different color. And I think that this red or that green that we had already was looking really nice. So I'm just going to click here and make it blacker or maybe lighter. I don't know. You can make your, you can make it even white or maybe even black. So it's totally fine. Whatever the color you choose uh, till it fits, it's okay. And I think that I will stick with this red color because it makes this portrait really nice. So I'm just gonna click OK. And here we have the curves that helps us on the light of this color. And I think that I will reduce this now. But uh, when we zoom in here, we don't we, we doesn't have a texture, so we have to add some fake uh, fake texture. Sorry, just click here when we have the digital skin texture and make the black mask into white. Now zoom in. Sorry, we didn't make it. And here you have that texture, but this one is obviously way too much. So I'm just gonna lower this by 50% and zoom in, check a before and after, and still is too much. So I'm just gonna lower this again into 25. And this is it. Let's just make this a group, rename the group backdrop change and let's just check a before and after and I think that is looking really really nice and now that we are done with background change you can just drag and drop this and right click merge the group Control A, Control C, File New, and merge again. So I'm just gonna create some color grade now. Click here on the color grade white skin and click play in whatever color grade action that suits for your portrait or this one if you're already following my step by step. And I think that this one is looking really nice. I'm just gonna drag and drop this whole group and place it on the original file. Let's just check out before and after. And I think that I don't want to make changes on the backdrop or not. Let's just open the group of the colors and I will check them one by one until we have the best color grading results. And this one is way too much, so lower this. This one is looking really nice. You can always make changes. And I think that 30% will be enough. And this one is increasing the red. So I'm just going to put this into 20%. And this one is for the blacks. It makes them a little into uh, blue. So reduce this. Click here on the black and white. As you can see, it's way too much. So I'm just gonna lower this by 3% or maybe four and click on the curves. Curves are all looking good. I'll check up before and after. If you wanna make uh, more adjustments to this portrait, you can just click here. And I think that I'm gonna add some uh, yellow or red highlights, something like this. Let's just check up before and after. And I don't want these changes in the backdrop, so I'm just going to open the background change group and I will create a selection and invert this and make it black. So I want the selection of this color balance on the, on the model or in the subject. So I'm just going to reduce this by 25% and put this inside the group. 
Now let's just check a before and after all the entire process. Let's just zoom in, oops, sorry, into the face. Let's just check a before and after. And I think that is looking really nice. So this is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this long video tutorial. And if you find this one useful, please don't forget to leave a comment, drop some likes and don't forget to subscribe uh, because why not? If you want to uh, get this raw file, link is in the description in my Telegram channel. If you want to get my retouching actions, recently I made a Creator Bundle Pack with 35% discount. So don't forget to check all the links in the description. If you have any question, please leave a comment or just DM me on the Instagram and see you guys in the next one. Peace.